and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. In this video, we're going to be starting a brand new series and we're going to do a painting of a toy sheep sitting on a trunk. If you want to follow along traditionally, acrylic and oils would probably work the best and these are the brushes I use. A 2 inch flat wash, a number 10 bristle brush, a number 8 filbert brush, a number 10 flat brush, a number 6 flat brush, a long script brush, a short script brush, and sometimes I throw in a number 3 round brush. I like to use canvas board, but you can also use a wrapped canvas, just whatever you prefer. The canvas board is a little bit more stable than a wrapped canvas. Here are the colors that I use, and I mostly use Grumbacher Academy, but you can also use Liquitex or Dela Rowney, and sometimes the color names will vary with the brands. The app that we're going to be using is Infinite Painter for Android, and here I'm just starting to make a beginning sketch, and I found this really cute picture of this sheep with his slippers and his night cap on and he's sitting on a trunk and this picture was at Pixabay where you can find uh, royalty free reference photos and I wanted to make a background kind of like a mural on the wall and I wanted some moon and some stars behind him and I just wanted it to look kind of like it was in a kid's room instead of sitting on the grass so I found some more <clears throat> photos from Pixabay that are royalty free and another picture of a room and what a carpet would look like and so I'm going to take all these photos and combine them to make this picture of the, the little sheep in the kids room and so here I'm using the Blackwell pencil to sketch out the picture of the sheep and the trunk and if you're following along traditionally, you might want to do this sketch on tracing paper first and then use uh, carbon copy paper or put some kind of um, chalk on the back and transfer it onto your canvas later that way. Or if you want to, you can just go ahead and sketch it on the canvas directly if you want to but it's kind of it would be easier I think if you if you want to make a detailed sketch especially of the trunk because you want to try to kind of get the perspective right on the trunk which I didn't exactly do so you want to do that first and so it would be better to probably sketch it out on a, another sheet of paper and if you're doing this in Infinite Painter make sure it's a separate layer because you want this sketch to be a guide for you so you'll want to keep it on a separate layer and here I'm using the straight line tool from Infinite Painter and also the the curve tool and um, this other tool that he has I, the polyhedron tool or something I can't remember exactly what you call it but anyway I'm using it to make the stars and these are really nice actually to go ahead and and make straight lines with and if you're following along traditionally get your ruler out and use it or some kind of a straight edge and you can use a miniature ruler for these stars and here I'm trying to actually do the stars and for some reason I've forgotten how to draw stars I used to be able to draw stars really well when I was a kid and it seemed to be really important at the time <laughs> But as I grew up, for some reason, I seem to have lost the ability to draw stars this year. But you just have to keep practicing, and hopefully it will return to you. So right now, I'm just kind of putting in the idea of some stars. I'm not getting them exactly perfect, because I figure I'll work on them later. But I'll tell you what, if you want to save trouble, get them right the first time. I mean... I'm always thinking, well, I'll just do it later, and, and I'll fix it later. Yeah, you, you can fix it later and stuff, but it is going to be more of a headache. So just draw it right the first time and save yourself some headaches. Just don't do what I do. Just draw it right the first time. 
But anyway, so that's what I was doing here. And I just went ahead and sort of made rough sketches of them. And didn't get them exactly right, but I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and do that later. And besides, it's supposed to be a kid's room, and so the stars don't have to be perfect because I want this to be kind of like a kid making a little theater set. And so, you know, that's my story for this picture, and, and I'm going to stick to it. <laughs> but anyway, and then here I wanted to go ahead and draw the clouds. I really liked that background that I found at Pixabay, and it had some really neat clouds. I liked the idea of the clouds and the moon there. And then I wanted the hanging stars. I really love those fake theater looking stars. And uh, it's kind of the style now to do that. And so I really love to put the hanging stars and hanging moons and all that. It just looks so neat to me. And anyway, here I'm doing the background. And you can probably use a very light purple for this. And if you're following along traditionally, a dioxazine purple with a lot of white acrylic gesso and just make it kind of a light violet color and the way you're going to do this probably um, an infinite painter is just use one of the air brushes to do the background but if you're doing this traditionally you might not want to put your drawing on until you do that background and just paint it with purple and then transfer your drawing on and so here I'm using the Leo brush to go ahead and make the clouds. And you can make those a darker purple color. Throw in a little bit of ultramarine blue if you're following along traditionally. Use your number six flat brush. It will work well for this. Or your number eight filbert to just kind of make the rounded edges of the clouds. And here I'm just kind of uh, straightening the edge out of the mural. And you can use the straight line tool in Infinite Painter or use a T-square if you're following along traditionally to, to line up your edges and get them straight. And just kind of working a little bit more on the clouds here, trying to get a, a smoother edge for them and then making sure that I save it because if it crashes you can lose things. And then I wanted to do the stars, and so I was going through several of the different brushes here. I tried the haze brush, but it just wasn't working for me. It wasn't um, scattering the stars like I wanted to. So I played around with it for a while, and as you can see, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. But I decided that I didn't want it, so I tried the inky brush, and this is the one that works the best, I think. It's more like a toothbrush splatter, which is what you would do if you're following along traditionally. Just take an old worn out toothbrush, take a real liquidy mixture of cadmium yellow light and mix it with white acrylic gesso and then take your paintbrush, your old toothbrush and dip it in there and just splatter it all over your canvas right there. And since you haven't started painting your sheep and stuff like that, it, it won't matter too much if it gets on there. But that makes really good random star patterns and it works great with the, the inky brush if you're using Infinite Painter. And I also made some bigger dots in the background for some bigger stars just to show that it has um, some bigger stars there and just kind of make them in random patterns. And then I went ahead and painted the moon, and you can use yellow cadmium yellow light probably with white acrylic gesso if you're following along traditionally. You just want a real pale yellow there, and use your number three round brush for that just to uh, be able to paint smaller details for that. And you can use your Leo brush and Infinite Painter or your Angelo brush. Just make it smaller in the size on the side there. And then I wanted to do the carpet a little bit and just give it kind of a sort of a, a rough texture there. So I went ahead and turned the texture on for the, the canvas and infinite painter. And you can use your number six flat or your number eight bristle brush. Just uh, make kind of some big areas of color and take 
it make it a light brown probably a burnt umber color with lots of acrylic gesso and a touch of um, ultramarine blue just to gray it out so you want a light brownish color for the the carpet and it doesn't have to be all the same color you kind of want to vary the colors a little bit just to give it more interest and you can use the Pollock brush if you want to to kind of give it a more of a textured look and in here I'm kind of throwing a little bit of some shadow on it just under the trunk there and I'll go back and, and fix that later and make it even more refined so this is the end of part one of my toy sheep series and in part two we're going to work more on the background and we're going to work a little bit on the sheep and on the trunk as well so if you want to catch part two just hit that subscribe button and thanks everybody for watching thank you so much for your support if you have any questions just leave them in the comments down below and i will catch you later